So I want to preach to you today from this subject, and we're still in our presser series. Do not allow the tears to tear you away from the kingdom of heaven. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do not allow the tears to tear you away from the kingdom of heaven. God bless you. Father, now bless us as we preach the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. May we do no damage, but preach that which becometh sound doctrine and gospel in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not allow the tears to tear, to rip you away from the kingdom of heaven. By introduction, John G. Butler the noted scholar and writer said this about the, the parable of the wheat and the tares. He says, this parable is about two seeds. Wheat and tares. Let me get simpler. Wheat and weeds. Because the tares were weeds. They were worthless. As a matter of fact, uh, MacArthur said that many times in biblical times, if someone wanted to hurt the crop of a farmer, perhaps an enemy of his want to hurt his harvest, he would slip out into his field at night and sow tares, weeds, and so whenever they would all come up, the farmer's expecting a field full of wheat producing grain. And his harvest may actually be 50 or 60% or 30% weeds, which would be worthless. So this parable is about two weeds. Two seeds, rather. One is wheat, the other is weed. Speaking of weed, <laughs> as if they don't have enough problems already. The state of California has legalized recreational marijuana. You won't like me for this because, you know, people have opinions. But a few years ago when the President of the United States said smoking weed is no worse than drinking a beer or something like that, that caused that industry the legalization to skyrocket. It's not good. I pray that our youth and young adults will have more sense, more wisdom than to allow yourself to be pulled in to that deception. Some things you ought to just be too smart for. Home training. Even if you don't have the Holy Ghost, home training ought to suggest certain things. Praise the Lord. I've never kind of, I've never fancied the idea of getting stoned and getting, getting high and, you know, all spaced out. I've never, I like, I like to be in control. I like, to, I like for my, I like for my extremity to move when I tell them to. Praise the Lord. I, I like to be in my right mind. Amen. But he said that uh, wheat and weeds, which represent good and bad people and their destiny. The bad people are charlatans. Charlatans are fakes. They are people who pretend to have knowledge or skill in an area that they do not have 
knowledge nor skill in. A charlatan is a hypocrite, a pretender. So the bad people are the charlatans. They look like good people, but are evil. However, in judgment, all the superficial and hypocritical professions will be exposed and condemned to fiery judgment. While only the true saints will be blessed with eternal blessings. End of quote. Matthew Henry observes, he says, now the drift of the, of the parable is to represent to us the present and future state of the kingdom of heaven, that is, the gospel church. Christ's care of it, the devil's enmity against it, the mixture that there is in it of good and bad in this world. And the separation between them in the other world. End of quote. Notice the way our Lord begins this particular parable in verse 24. For the first time in Matthew, he actually says, and the kingdom, another parable spake he forth, saying, the kingdom of heaven is like. This was the first time. He says, this is what the kingdom is like. So he's, he's painting a word picture. And the people in the audience fully understood uh, uh, wheat and farming and all those things. So it, it, it registered with them. The preceding pattern, parable, the parable of the sower, dealt, dealt with how the preached message of the kingdom is or is not received. We'll get to that one. But this parable presents the kingdom of heaven not simply as the kingdom of heaven that God establishes in the heart of every man, but it is now uh, presenting the kingdom of heaven as the body of Christ in the world, the body of Christ on earth. This parable presents the kingdom of heaven as the church world. Not Bezalia in your heart, but the church world in the world. Now, it says in verse 24, follow me, the man which soweth, let me reveal the characters to you. It says in verse 24, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed. Well, the man which sowed the good seed is Christ himself. Verse 37 says, uh, and he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. So Jesus is the sower of the seed. The good seed that he sowed, according to verse uh, 24, are the true believers. For verse 38 says, um, the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. So the, the field, I just mentioned it, is the world. The good seed are the people who truly got saved. The person who has placed the good seed in the church world, uh, which is on earth, is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The enemy who sold the tares at night, according to verse 39, the enemy that sold them is the devil. So Christ was the good man who sold the good seed in his field. The good seed are the true believers who are truly saved. The field is earth. While they slept, while men slept, the enemy, the devil, he came and sold tares. Well, according to verse 38, 
the tares are the wicked, are the children of the wicked one. Verse 38 says, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the, of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Are you following me? So you see that the kingdom is not simply a spiritual kingdom that is set up in your heart, but it, uh, in the heart of every believer, but it is the church world. It is the body of Christ, and I'm, I'm, I'm constantly emphasizing, in the world. And what we learn among many other things that, that this parable teach is that there are, there have always been, and there shall always be two kinds of people in the church world. The good and the bad. Praise the Lord. Are you with me? We also learn that the good people and the bad people will be a part of the kingdom of heaven in this earth as long as the kingdom is on earth. As long as the church is in the world. That will be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled people in the church. And there will be hypocrites, pretenders, and liars in the church. As long as the church is on earth. Praise the Lord. Oh, so that, that tells you right there. The Lord, if I, I just want to find me a church where everybody's saved. If you find one, it'll be that way till you join. There is always somebody who is right. There's always somebody who's wrong. There are good people and there are bad people in the kingdom. The apostle Paul said this about hypocrites and pretenders and tares in the church. First, First Corinthians chapter 11 Verse 18 and 19, he says, first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be, that there are divisions among you. And I partly believe it. He says to the saints at Corinth, I hear that there are divisions. When you all come to worship, that there are sects. That, Paul says that there are cliques. Among you. See? So, uh, so now, if they had cliques in Paul's day. If they had folk who pretended to be who and what they weren't in the church, Paul pastor. And Paul wrote 14 of the 26 books, 27 books of the New Testament. Praise the Lord. If he did that and, uh, and, and they had cliques in the church at Corinth, then pray for the rest of them. But, but also learn from it and stop treating it like you're so stunned. I, I, I just don't understand. What, what is that you don't understand? Why don't you understand? Why are you so bothered? It's not, it's, point I'm making is, it's not a new phenomenon. Right. Hadn't just happened. And there you go. I'm just thinking about leaving the Lord and giving up. Why? Because I found that there are some, some, some folk in the church who are not what they, what, they, what they claim to be. So that's your response to it. So I discovered some folk who are not what they should be. So you know what I'm going to do? You know, they're not what they, sh they should be. And they're going to hell because they're not what they should be. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hell too because I'm going to stop being what I should be because I discovered that there are people who are not what they should be. What kind of response is that? Let me tell you something, people. Christianity is a thinking man's religion. Unless you use to learn to use your brain, you will be lost. You'll get tripped up by an old sin. 
an old phenomenon. Paul says, I hear that there are divisions among you. And then he says, and I partly believe it. Then he said this, for conjunction, let me connect it. For there must also be heresies among you. It's, 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 that it must, it's necessary for there to be sex among you. That they which are approved might be made manifest among you. You would never be able to appreciate the greatness of the world-class athletes, all-star athletes. You can appreciate how great a football, college football team is without bowl games. People who earn the right to compete on those bowl games. You, you couldn't appreciate the, the, the greatness of an NFL a team if there was no Super Bowl that declared someone to be the greatest. You couldn't appreciate the greatness of a LeBron James or a Steph Curry or Kevin Durant or some of the others or that Greek freak. If everybody was as good as those guys are. The fact that there are others who are not that good. The fact that there are others who can't compete on that level. That highlights the greatness of what they're doing. You see the losers in the church. The folk who aren't who and what they should be. They're the ones that shine the spotlight on the folk who are. Yeah, when you, you see, when you see the true believers, you can recognize the true anointing, the true believer from the fake believer. Why? Because there is a distinguishable difference. Lord have mercy. So Paul said, yes, it's, it's necessary that there be heresies. A heresy is a, is a sect or any group of people or any doctrine that is contrary to the established doctrine of the church. That there are people who rebel. The rebellious ones only make those who do what is right look better. If you're seeing through the right set of eyes. Now, if you see the rebellious ones and rebelling and in your eyes, they're getting away with murder and seem like to me they're getting over and it just ain't right, and it's going to vex me, because these people right here, and, 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 and that's the way you look at the rebellious ones. The problem is not the rebellious ones. The problem is your sight. You're looking at it the wrong way. See, they're not, no one gets away with anything. No one. The Bible says, be sure your sins will find you out. Just let them keep going. But you, you don't let that vex you. You be what you should be. I can't get into hell. In effect, the apostle was saying that the fake folk caused the real folk to look ever more real. The division is proof that some, not all, fail to recognize the mind of God. Look at what Peter says about this. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, he goes back a little ways. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people. That is, Israel. Back in the Old Testament, even as there shall be, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall privately, God bless you, Elder Robert Foster today, he did a tremendous job revealing the wickedness and the demons behind yoga. You know, they say yoga is, is not a religion, it's an exercise. If, if that's true, why do they chant in yoga? Why do you pray doing yoga? What kind, why do you open yourself up to powers 
doing yoga. It is a religion. It's a Hindu religion. And, and we're trying to bring it in and make it fit everywhere. Matter of fact, the Hindus want their religion back. <laughs> they, they want it back. And, uh, and they can have it. But uh, uh, he did a tremendous job. Tremendous job uh, uh, opening it up and how uh, the devil know how to appear to be innocuous. Oh, just harmless and uh, oh, just so benign and, and you, 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 you're just stretching and, and you're feeling such peace and not knowing that you're opening yourself up to all kinds of spirits. And they know how to come in. I can't get an amen. I must be in a... I must be in a yoga church. I can't get any amens. Uh, they know how to ease that stuff in and make it appear to be harmless where what you're doing is you're subjecting yourself to spirits that uh, we may not be able to cast out. So you need to come around fast and, and leave it alone. I said before we did the class today, I said, let me tell you this before we unveil these truths. The Bible says, he that knoweth his master's will and doeth it not, shall be beaten with many stripes. He that don't know and doeth it not shall be beaten with few. In the kingdom, you're responsible for what you know. So if we enlighten you to the truth and you hear the truth and you still go on, well, then go on with your bad self. But when God gets through with you, you'll be beaten with many stripes. Amen. He said, these false teachers shall privately bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. The point I wish to highlight here is, as there were false prophets in the Old Testament days, there are false teachers today, and they all hang around the kingdom of God. This is why you can't allow the tares to tear you out of the kingdom of heaven. This is why you can't allow anyone to separate you from the church or to steal your joy because they are not who and what they should be. Tares, amen, come from a variety of the darnel weed which closely resembles wheat and it's almost impossible to distinguish from wheat until wheat ripens. When the wheat ripens, the wheat bring forth grain. Tares bring forth nothing. So uh, uh, it may take a few weeks for the wheat to ripen. Praise the Lord. And to bring forth grain and for the difference to be evidenced. The point I'm making is, uh, for a minute, all of us look the same. The saved saints, the good people, look just like the bad people. For a while, we all smile the same. We all behave the same. And we all, praise the Lord, seem to be real. And we all seem to be sincere. Until it's time to bring forth fruit. Oh, yeah. Until... Life happens. That's, that's what separates the real believer from the false believer. Life. Praise the Lord. Life. Trouble. Heartache. And proof. See, as you live, when you're saved like the Bible said, you know what you do? You grow. The thing that vexed you 10 years ago ought not to be the same thing that's vexing you today. The, the way the devil could trip you up, praise the Lord, a little while ago, you, you're growing now. He can't trip you up with that today. Tears do not get better. The, the tear don't grow. The tear can act just like the Christian as long as life is good. But when life gets a little rough, the tear go to cussing. When life gets a little rough, the tear uh, gets missing from service. When, when life gets rough, the tear won't praise the Lord. But the weak believer, that believer who saved even through tear-dimmed eyes, will lift their hands and still say the Lord is good. 
and worthy to be praised. You, you can't find the tear marching for abortion rights because the tear knows that all human life is sacred. There was no wheat out there yesterday. But I'm for women's rights. Rights to do what? To kill that human being on the inside? No. The wheat would be in a, say, in, a, in a position like that. A true believer would never be found marching for a man to have the right to marry a man. Or a woman to have this so-called right to marry a woman. Ain't no way this well because the, the true believer knows that that's against God. The, the true believer, amen, will work on their own attitude. Work on, we work on our own disposition because we want to get better. And Jesus said that a, a, a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. And uh, praise God, a good tree can't bring forth corrupt fruit. Bible says either make the tree good and the fruit good or the tree corrupt and the fruit corrupt but you can't get good fruit from a corrupt tree and if you want to bring forth good fruit you got to let the Lord make you good hallelujah there are people in here today whom the Lord have saved if you know you're saved you ought to say something the Lord saved me, preacher, and added me to the kingdom. Well, I want to say to the saved in here, let me talk to you for a minute, because I notice that it seems to me that Tara, the tares are more faithful to the church than the wheat, because the tares will run off members but they won't leave. Tears will act the fool. Yes, they will. They'll hurt your feelings. Will tell you off. Will steal your joy. And will still come down on the dance floor and dance like they haven't done anything. Oh, Lord, it. Somebody say tears. Tears will, praise the Lord, play games with you. Lay up with you. Fornicate with you. Adulterate with you. Homosexualize you. Talk about you. And still speak in tongues. And uh, the tears. The tares are going to keep their place in the kingdom. Seem like to me tares don't get sick. They don't miss service. They show up for the express purpose of stealing your job. But if God has made you wheat, good God Almighty, you ought to be determined that you're not going to let the tags run you away from God. Lift your hands and say yeah. Ha. Shake somebody's hand and tell them don't let the tags tear you away from the kingdom. I'm not going to sit around and watch the tags shout. No, sir, because I don't care how much they shout. They can't take up the whole dance floor. And God has been too good to me to let the tear cause me to rob God of his praise. I'm not going to sit around since the tears ain't going nowhere. Then I'm going to do my part because if I go home, then I'm leaving my whole pew to the tears. If I go home, I might leave the microphone to the tear. But if I'm in my place, then the tear can't do my job. And it's my job to glorify the King of Kings. 
and the Lord of Lords and let the world know that there is a difference that there is a reality in serving the Lord so I'm calling on the wheat to be wheat wheat praise the Lord wheat live holy wheat don't lose your joy wheat don't go home and stay wheat ah, wheat serve the Lord lift your hands and give him praise if you're wheat up here thank you I need a few cheerleaders in here today hallelujah tell the devil you're not running me off I have an assignment God has given me a job and I don't care who talk about me I don't care who loud me the tears can do what they want to but I'm gonna do what the Lord has saved me to do yeah oh, yeah I just want to see the wheat praise him good to see you praise him if you will praise him if you will you ought to be shame of yourself. You ought to be ashamed. You won't shout. You won't praise him. You won't dance. Because the hypocrite is dancing. Well, I want you to know that God is not upset with the hypocrite. God is looking at you and saying, what's wrong with you? Didn't I wake you up this morning? Didn't I start you on your way? Did not heal your body. Did not save your soul. Well, you better get your wheat self on the floor and let the good times roll. Lift your wheat hands. Shake your wheat head. to shout he's been too good to me been too good that's gonna give you a break to praise the Lord when you're preaching you can see folk and uh, many times I see you sitting there with your saved self but you got your eyes on somebody who you know ain't right you're watching them and you can't even get into the service because you know they're not what they should be but you're letting the devil rob you cause there's gonna always be somebody who's not what they should be but you ought to still get up good God almighty and tell the world he's sweet I know that he is a keeper that he is a way maker ask me how do I know here's how I know he made a way, made a way for me. He's kept me and never left me. I'm weak. Somebody praise him. Weak. Good God Almighty. Weak. Let me make my stand. Weak. Woo. So, so since. Since he said, 
let them grow together. That means there gonna always be good people in the church while the church is on earth. And there will always be bad people in the church while the church is on earth. But the dilemma is, here's my problem. The bad people, the charlatans, never fail to do their job. But the wheat, wheat act like they ain't got no sense. Wheat act like they don't have any discernment. Wheat is so easy to be vexed. Why, why are your feelings so easily hurt? And pastor, I'm just crushed. And I don't know if I even go on in the law. I'm looking at you like, man, you got to be crazy. I, I, can't, I can't believe this. I can't believe you mean to tell me because you found out that somebody wasn't who and what you think they were. You can't go on another day. You, had, you must be tear. Because when you meet Jesus, Mm -hmm. I heard songwriters say something deep down inside me keeps telling me go ahead go ahead oh, go ahead I wonder do I have anybody here who had that thing on the inside that says, go ahead, go ahead, oh, go ahead, yeah, somehow to walk with it, can I get somebody just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. in the Lord uh, uh, go ahead yeah yeah so Lord said Lord said leave him alone let him grow verse 40 says as as therefore the tares as therefore are the tares Gathered and burned in fire. So shall be the end of this world. The son of man shall send forth his angels. And they shall gather out of his kingdom. All things that offend. And all them which do iniquity. That's a day coming. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father who hath ears to hear let him hear their day is coming to an end but there's coming a day for ain't nobody gonna be left but the righteous and the righteous are going to be with the father in his kingdom forever I want to be there I'm going to be there and I'm not going to miss it because I let uh, the behavior of some tear some person who was never saved in the first place, somebody who proved not to be what we thought they were, I'm not going to let that person, that person, affect me in my relationship with my church, and with my relationship with my God. Oh, you, some of you, you you're tears, you, you hurt people, you run them off. God is going to deal with you for that. You can't just do that to people. But then the people who allowed it, why would you allow that? I tell people all the time, when you make a decision for Christ or when you join the church or something, you should never allow someone who didn't factor into that decision to cause you to undo that decision. 
I met I met some false people, uh, mother, at the, you know, at the temple where we worship. Oh, hypocrites everywhere. But they weren't on the altar when I got it. Wasn't nobody there when I got it, but me and Jesus. We were talking. We were talking. And the Lord saved me. Man of God prayed for me. That loser, who he, he was a hypocrite, standing over there in the corner when I came. When I got mine. I didn't even know him, but he was tired. Why then would I let somebody who didn't factor into that decision run me off? It ain't going to happen. When I feel like my friends are few and I don't know what to do. I go down in secret prayer. The Lord meets me right there. When they put me down, Jesus picks me up. He helps me drink from life's bitter cup. comes to get you oh Lord I'm not I'm not giving up I'm not taking down I'm not taking back good God Almighty oh Lord oh Lord mm -hmm. oh Lord I ain't gonna let uh, turn me around Jesus, thank 
you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to begin to thank him on the altar. What do what you want me to thank him for, preacher? Thank him for making you wheat. Thank him for saving you. Woo! Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him for letting, for him, him causing you to be a saint who works where you work. A saint who lives where you live. A saint who occupies your body. <laughs> a saint who is standing right where you are standing. Thank him for letting him make you wheat. Thank him for it. That, that you're, you're sown in the field. The field is the world. It's his world. That he let you be saved. He saved you in a day like today in the name of Jesus you ought to just thank him Lord I just thank you for being saved Lord I just thank you for being saved thank you for being wheat thank you for being one of your good people Lord in the name of Jesus the enemy has tried to stop me but I want to thank you Jesus for making me one of yours I'm glad to be in holiness I'm glad to be free I'm glad to be saved, glad to be a part of the kingdom, glad, glad, glad to be washed in the blood of the Lamb, glad, glad to have power in the name of Jesus. Tell God thank you, tell God thank you, tell God thank you, tell God thank you, thank you, thank you for saving me, thank you for sanctifying me. Why don't you thank him for filling you with the Holy Ghost and then turn around and thank him for your divine assignment. He called you to be an elder. He's called you to be a preacher. He's called you to be a missionary. He's called you to be a caregiver. He called you to the usher ministry. He called you to the music ministry. He called you to the ministry of helps. He's called you to be a prayer warrior. He's made you a church mother. He raised you up at such a time as this. Made you a deacon. Made you a saint. Good God Almighty anointed you to be a part of the happy warriors. Look at the hand of God on your life. He broke habits. You don't smoke anymore. He broke habits. You're not on drugs anymore. He broke habits. He pulled you out of immorality. Pulled you out, hallelujah, of sin. And then he sanctified you. He blessed you real good. Well, you ought to ask him now. Keep me, Jesus. Keep me, Lord. Keep me, Lord. Lord, I'm sorry for letting tears steal my joy. Lord, I'm sorry for letting hypocrites block my praise. Lord, I'm sorry for letting folk live in my head rent free who do not have the right to even be there. You sanctified me. You saved me. And since people like that are going to always be in the kingdom, they're going to be somewhere. They're going to be at this church or at that church. Well, Lord, give me power to just be, to be who you call me to be, to be real, to be saved, to be weak. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm starting over today. I'm starting over today. I'm starting over today. The Holy Ghost is in here. I'm starting over today. I'm starting over today. I'm starting over. The devil has gotten the best of me for much too long. But from now on, from now on, I'm keeping my eyes on the cross. I'm keeping my eyes on Jesus, looking under Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. Not your mama, but Jesus. Not your dad, 
but Jesus, not your uncle, not the preacher, but praise Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're my example. You're my example. And I give you glory. And I give you honor. And I lift you up. Yeah. Yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Staying power. Staying power. Staying power. Staying power. Staying power. Staying power. 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 Yes, Lord. Sit on your power. Sit on your anointing. Sit on the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 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 I feel like praying. Jesus. Change my outlook. Change my attitude. Change. Change it, Lord. Change it, Lord. Change it, Lord. Help me to see the glory. For the glory of God is everywhere. It's everywhere. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! 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 Praise Him for His glory. Praise Him for His glory. Praise Him for His anointing. We, 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 promoted I've seen things but I've never seen anything that made me want to give this up Woo! come out here to stay long somebody better come get me till I die how many do I have that come out here to stay till I die yeah now see so I'm not going to, history would not record that I backslid because some tear ran me out to church. Now the tear sitting there. Time has passed and everything. But I'm a notch. I'm a notch on the tear's back. That, that, that old tear got me. So now I'm just, a, I'm just a notch on his belt. The devil's a liar. No, no. Worst case scenario, both of us sitting, there, sitting here old. Looking at each other, trying to figure out which one's going to die first. Because I'm weak and I'm still here. And he may be tear and still here, but there's a difference in our life because in the life of the wheat, I say this: we, unlike tear, bring forth fruit. The life of the weed is a barren life. Somebody begin to praise God for the fruit. 
praise him for the fruit that you that you've yet to bring forth Woo! that's right brother Ray praise him because God has fruit for you fruit. you don't know what God's gonna make out of you man just keep on There may be somebody who's ready to change categories. See, the parable is two kinds of people, and there's two stories, two paragraphs. One way gives the parable, then the other way explains it. Two, two. Then two ultimate destinations. Tares go to hell. They go to, they, they're burned. Wheat go to the barn of the Father. Now, you don't have to remain a tear. You don't have to stay wheat. Uh, a weed, excuse me. You want to remain wheat. You have to stay, remain a tear. Jesus, Jesus don't make tears. Jesus only sows good people into the kingdom. Satan brought the bad but the bad that satan brings can be converted amen praise the lord jesus loves everybody jesus died to save everybody jesus is not mad at anybody not mad at anyone he wants you to be saved he wants you to be saved come on over to the lord's side Come on and let the Lord save you. Don't, don't be over there. Don't be over there. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't pretend. You can be real. What we say, we're going to keep it real? Well, let's be real. For real, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He'll change your life. He'll turn you around. He'll save you. Will there be one? Who would come and say, preacher, I want to be wheat. I want to be real. Because there's a day coming. There's a day coming. When God would draw an awesome line of demarcation. There's a day coming. And I want to be ready. Ready when he comes. Will you come? Will you come? I just want to give someone a moment. God has strengthened the wheat. But somebody needs to be saved. Not everybody in here today is saved. And if everyone is, isn't that a wonderful thing? But if it's one who's not, I'm pulling on God. The Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart. The Lord is saying, give him a chance to come. He'll save you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Would you lift your hands and praise the Lord? How many know that to the utmost Jesus say to the utmost Jesus say he will yes he will and turn Clap your hands for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, let's take our assignment seriously. We have an in-house leadership conference that's coming up. We're going to be imparting. We want to strengthen the wheat. Your role in the body of Christ and in America today is more vital than it has ever been. We live in a nation where today our nation calls wrong right. Our nation called right wrong. Not enough preachers helped those of us who tried to warn the people. And we heard, we had preachers telling us that we could not legislate our morality. While the preachers were saying that to us, the devil's folk legislated immorality. Oh, the sad thing, the sad thing is we live in a nation where immorality has been put in.
put into law. Oh my God. Look at how the tares have worked their tareness. I don't know if that's a word or not. But you know what? I heard the Lord say something about we. He says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face. The Lord says, I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal the land. Hallelujah. I want to say this to you, upper room. This message is vital and it's important because I shared this in the uh, 8 o'clock and I'm done. I shared this. Principalities that we fight against are ruling spirits. They have more authority in the kingdom of heaven, Satan than do power. Principalities control powers. They assign these demonic forces that are called powers. They, they don't get assigned to churches where the devil know the preacher ain't going to say anything anyway. He ain't going to speak against anything. He's just going to preach prosperity, make you feel good about yourself, talk about the haters and all that. Where the devil assigned powers. It's like a, a normal battle. How many ex-military do I have in here? Ex-military. You know, you've been trained that where the battle is hot, that's where you send your troops. That's where you concentrate. You ain't going to put the bulk of your troops somewhere where nobody's fighting. If they're fighting, it's hot. Go over there to try to win that territory. Upper room, we are hot for Jesus. We are hot for the Lord. This is why you need to be in place. You need to be a prayer warrior. You've got to be wheat because the enemy has reassigned. Hallelujah. He has, he has sent troops before uh, Elder Foster when he arrived. Once we announced the dates of the teaching against uh, yoga, once we announced the dates, spirits of infirmity attacked his body as never before. Attacked his liver. Attacked his muscles. But he came on anyhow. Then got to church this morning right before class. And the devil attacked him again. And one side of his whole body stopped working. Them demons said, you ain't going to reveal us. But thank God for some praying saints. For, Jer for Jerome King and the gang. Well, McNeil, these guys who know how to get a prayer through. When they finished praying, I presented the preacher. And he stood and began to unveil the truths that the devil don't want revealed. You need, we need to pray for each other. You need to pray for your leader. We need to join shoulder to shoulder and walk in lockstep with each other because we fight the good fight of faith. And the devil don't like it. He doesn't like it. But I heard the Lord as I pondered this. I said, Lord, should I be afraid? Should I be afraid for my life? Should I be afraid for my health? Should I be afraid? Should I be afraid? Should I be afraid? And I heard the Lord say, I have prayed for thee. See? That your faith fail you not. See, Jesus is the intercessor. He intercedes on our good God Almighty. Our behalf. Good God. Then I heard him say, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And then I stumbled across a gem of a scripture the other day that says, fear not him. 
Fear not man who can destroy your body and then there is no more that he can do. He said, I tell you who to fear. Fear him that can destroy the body and cast your soul into hell. Who we reverence, who we submit ourselves to is the Lord. Good God Almighty. Lord God. And the Lord does the rest. Now Lord, heal the sick who are amongst us. Heal, oh God. Touch, Lord. Touch loved ones. Touch my daughter. Break that yoke, that coal. Oh, God. Touch saints. Touch. We rebuke flu. You know, I, I was watching on television the other day where a lady in her 40s, and she's a marathon runner, and she got the flu in just a couple of weeks or a couple of days or something. She was dead. So there's a strange thing going around. But how many know that our Lord promised that the sun would not smite us by day nor the moon by night? Then I heard God when he told me, I'll be your shade upon your right hand. And hallelujah. That is, I'll block you from stuff. Shekarabosa. Somebody ought to let him block you. In the name of Jesus. Now, now, Father. Oh, God. Lord, do not let this word slip away. Don't let us forget it before service is over. Don't let us, Lord. By the time we get to the car, forget that we are wheat. And then our assignment, our assignment is to bring forth fruit in Jesus' name. Last thing, in a discussion with a pediatric doctor, she said to me, Pastor, do you think that a young lady who is pregnant out of wedlock, who has no money, who can't afford that child, do you think that should, she should be made to have an abortion. She should be forced to give birth. Yeah, to give birth. You think she should be forced to give birth. She don't have the money. She don't have the family. She's pregnant. She's not married. My answer was twofold. I said, number one, ma'am, I'm glad, praise the Lord, that birth was given to me. We, we weren't rich, but I'm glad that that beautiful lady who's an esteemed mother in the church, whom I honor and reverence and revere. I'm glad she allowed us to be here. But number two, and here's the truth, no lady who is pregnant is ever forced to give birth. That's natural. There's no force in that. You don't have to do anything to it. Just let nature take its course. That's going to happen anyway. The force is the other side. For the little one in the womb doesn't give up without a fight. What's your point? When you are We don't have to be forced to we bring forth grain. We bring forth fruit. What is fruit? Fruit is producing other souls. Fruit is your personal life, attitude, behavior, and everything improving, changing, moving closer to God, getting better, moving up, shifting, praise the Lord. Getting over things, that's fruit. Now, let that which naturally occurs in wheat, let it occur in you. You have to make it. Just let it. Hallelujah. Oh.